Welcome back, everyone, to another edition of Rudy's Rant, powered by Come On Now, the podcast. I am your host, Rudy Rodriguez Shoman. I'm going to jump in on a quick rant for you today. Before we jump in, thank you so much for your continued support of our channel. We greatly appreciate you as we get closer and closer to 250, 100 subscribers already. Keep pushing us along. We want 10,000 by the end of the year, so help us get there. We appreciate you. We told you. We told you. We told you. We told you. How many times does someone have to repeat something before you finally listen? Clearly, you don't listen, and you just saw again how much no one cares about the WNBA if Caitlin Clark is not on that court. You had two games yesterday competing against the NFL. The WNBA, in their infinite wisdom and their infinite marketing expertise, chose again to compete with NFL Sunday for game one of their play of their semifinal series with the Aces. And the Liberty at three and the Minnesota Lynx and Connecticut Sun at eight or eight thirty or whatever time that game took place at. They thought that was a good idea. They thought, man, we got them. We got them. We, we, these people love us. Caitlin Clark isn't here, but they love us. Oh my goodness. I will confess. I did not watch any of the first game between the aces and the Liberty. I know the final score was 87, 77, Liberty beat the Aces. Brianna Stewart seems to have balled out with 34 on 12 of 19 shooting. Uh, she also, let's see, what else did she do? She she had uh, four assists, five boards. John Quill Jones has 13 points, 12 rebounds. Sabrina Inesco had 21 points, five assists, four rebounds. All the Aces were led by <clears throat> Kelsey Plum, who had 24 points, four assists, and two rebounds. And the league MVP, Asia Wilson, <clears throat> had 21, six rebounds, five assists, but they were minus 17 when she was on the floor. They lost by 10. She played 38 minutes. So those two minutes that she didn't play, they were plus seven. I'm not saying that for anything other than that you know the numbers because, you know, I one can, I, I, I voiced pro- previously that. Her, imp- her improved numbers have not resulted in winning. They they won at a decent level this year, but they were like seven games be- below their winning last year where she averaged 22 and like 10 or something like that. This year she's 27 and 12, and their winning has gone down. But I want to focus on the reality of what's ex- what happened yesterday. <clears throat> you got nothing out of your six man or six woman in Tiffany Hayes. She had two points. You got nine from Alicia Alicia Clark. Alyssa Clark, what was Alicia? What's her, what's her name? Alicia Clark, yeah. Got nine out of her. But other than that, I mean, heck, you can't. The Liberty only got nine total points from their bench. So not much off of either bench. All that said, let's take a look at the most important number. The attendance of this game is 14,015. This arena holds 17,732. This is a playoff game. <clears throat> this is a semifinal playoff game, in fact, against the team that New York played last year in the WNBA Finals. This is a rematch, and they had 3,717 empty seats or unpaid for seats. I didn't see a picture of the arena, so I don't know how many people actually showed up. We know what those numbers are. Those numbers are paid tickets. They're not actually people in the seats. So they can't fill up or sell out an arena in the semifinals of the WNBA playoffs. And you thought we were joking when we said nobody cares. But I'm going to give you one that's even better because the the New York Liberty actually draw at a better level than anyone else in the league with the exception of the Indiana Fever this year. Let me see here. I want to bring this up. So the New York Liberty averaged 12,729 fans per game in their 20 home games. So, yeah, they have drawn people. The Aces average 11,282.85 in their home games. But now now let's take a look at 
the next game. That said, they're still short. How are you not selling out a playoff game? It's because we told you why. <laughs> Nobody cares. Nobody gives. No one gives a damn. Can you imagine the New York Knicks playing in, in, in an Eastern Conference semi and, and not selling out? Or the Brooklyn Nets playing Eastern Conference semi and not selling out? Please, that would never happen. But let's look at that next game. The next game is where it's really, really embarrassing for the league because they want to tell us, you know, how how much everyone wants to watch this trash can product. <clears throat> but let's take a look at the next game between the Connecticut Sun and the Minnesota Lynx. In this game, this game now, see, I will admit, I watched the final two minutes of this game. Why? Because I was on the computer and I saw, oh, wow. Connecticut's actually winning by a point with two minutes left. Let me check this out. Because I really want Connecticut to lose. And, and obviously I'm disappointed that Minnesota did not get the job done. <clears throat> Connecticut comes away with a 73-70 win. Led by Marina Mabry, who had 20. Uh, Alyssa Thomas had 17, 10, and 9. Dewana Bonner had 10, 11, and 5. Dejan A. Carrington had 13, 9, and 4. And um, but the Minnesota Lynx did not get shooting. They were 5 of 20 from 3. There's your ball game. If they can't shoot, they can't win. Collier, Nafisa Collier leads them with 19, 9, 19, 9 and 4. Bridget Carlton had 17 and 2. And that's and Kelly McBride had 12. That's really all you got. He didn't get much. <clears throat> from your other players that you need to win. You need the shooting, especially. They got out-rebounded, out-assist, committed more turnovers. Yeah, and, and, and heck, they shot 13 free throws, and Connecticut had three. So look at that. Look at that. But here's the number. The attendance for this game was 8,506. This is the semifinals. This is utterly embarrassing. The Target Center holds 20,000. 20,000. They did not just come up short. This building, this building <clears throat> in ticket sales, was more than half empty. If you probably look at the reality, I'm guessing there may have been 5,000 people there. Five, 6,000. Because it's rare that even in a sellout that everyone goes. I mean, I've been to the Eastern Conference Finals Game 7. I've been to NBA Finals Games. And I have seen empty seats scattered around arenas. <clears throat> because not everyone goes. People try to sell their tickets, can't get the money they want for them. And they go unsold. But for a game like this, where you have 8,506, I'm going to guess that at least probably 1,500 people didn't show up. That's an embarrassment. These are two of your three best records in the league, and you can't draw flies to poop. You can't draw flies to poop. You cannot make this up. I have not seen TV ratings yet. I, I'm looking forward to when that comes out to have a conversation about that as well. But as of right now, the attendance, people in the building, not exactly impressive, WNBA. And I'm not sitting here by any means saying that you should rig a game so that Caitlin Clark can advance. What I am saying is that you shouldn't rig a game so that she can't advance. <laughs> you shouldn't you shouldn't have a game officiated so poorly that in a game where she got hit, you know, twice with flagrant fouls and neither one of them was called in a six point game that you couldn't have had a game three in that series if the, ref, the game was officiated properly. Again, they may have lost the series, but the point that we've been making for quite some time now is once she's gone from the playoffs, because I didn't think that they, they would win the the, the win the finals but at the same time i don't know that the WNBA really wanted her in the finals because they wanted to show you how good they are without her 
even though their entire attendance numbers all season was predicated on her at home and on the road. So you have a game that drew 40% of capacity for an arena. 40%. It's mind-blowing. But you keep telling us that we want to watch this, this, this stuff. It's not good. And if you want to keep it a buck on this game itself, this game, the numbers are bad. A team that shoots well from the field goes five for 20. They shoot 41.5% of the field. Connecticut shoots 41.3%. This game was determined in large part on the glass and, and, you know, really on rebounding because that's why Connecticut got 10 more shots than, uh, than Minnesota did. But you had bad shooting in a sport now, and you're competing against the NFL again. Last night game was last night's game was the Ravens and the Bills. I don't know what the TV ratings are again. I have not seen them yet. I've been looking. I've been looking. And you know what's even worse about this is the Minnesota Lynx actually averaged 9,291 per game. So they actually fell below their season average in the regular season. Oh yeah, they played Caitlin Clark once when she when she sold the building out. Yeah, their their season high was nineteen thousand twenty three. So yeah, she uh, that was her game. I'm sure. I'm gonna presume that that was Caitlin Clark's game. Yeah, and you want to tell me that this team is this this league draws? I I mean, <laughs> you you oh boy. Let me see if they got anything up here yet. before I wrap this one up because yeah, as of right now, it's, I still don't see it yet. I wonder if they're going to hide it the same way the Olympics hid the, the women's U S team. Um, but even last week you saw what happened. Caitlin Clark drew 2.5 million. The game after was half that they drew over a million because of Caitlin Clark, the game before. Otherwise, no one really gave a darn. But anyhow, what are your thoughts on this? I mean, this is obviously what we expected. We expected to see a massive drop-off. I mean, the attendance speaks volumes. They can't sell out games, man. They can't sell out playoff games. And they think that they can survive this league without the superstar face of the league named Caitlin Clark. Miss me with the BS. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Sure to like, subscribe. Hit that bell. You get all up-to-the-minute updates. Come on now.